Texas who's doing it. But I was wondering if they, you think they're using the guise of this fracking fluid, buying it as that, and then and then spraying it, you know, for other purposes. Well, you know, that's exactly what the, the chemtrails contain. Barium, aluminum, strontium, and other particulates. And it's got to come from somewhere. Uh, I've often exactly. I've often wondered about that, and you know you gotta you gotta wonder who's behind it exactly. We've looked at some of the private companies that might be behind it. We've seen the budget, the, the major chemtrail budget was released on the Intel Hub website. Uh, Scott, have you heard anything of this? Well, I know the the you know strontium is has been a, a new addition uh, recently. I I did a video and put it in it. Uh, uh, that, that they were using uh, strontium isotopes. Basically, strontium is a metal that you has high reflective properties. So you you put it in water, it's like it, it reflects 30 times more better than than the other things, you know. So it, when you're dealing with fracking, okay, now I saw Arkansas had just had another 2.8 earthquake, uh, and they're fracking down there. Uh, there's about 600 different chemicals in it, uh, rocks of uh, uh, he's on my my uh, channel page to sub. Uh, he put out a great video on it with, with that releases a, a pretty good uh, detailed list of the stuff that's in it. You know, and, and Mike, you're over there in PA. I just want to say hi to Clark out there since I, I got somebody from, from PA over there. Mike, and, uh, do you know Clark? <laughs> no, I don't. I didn't uh, think so. I didn't know that Scott was talking about. But okay, Scott, shout out to Clark. You, anytime you want to do a shout out, Scott, go right ahead. He's good people, man. He's good people. Well, maybe but, Mike and uh, get up together. I was just in yeah. PA for the uh, for your mind conference. Met a lot of good people up there. Mike, did we meet up there? No, we didn't. Um, I uh, missed that one. I was at Trees in America last year. Oh, yeah. But I saw that as you guys are going to try and make us a yearly thing, maybe, huh? Yeah, you know, keep bugging Mark Passio about it, and hopefully we will. Well, I'll definitely be at the next one. Cool, man. It was a great time, and all of the videos from that conference can be found on the website. But I don't know that we answered your question. Any final thoughts? Well, you know, I was just bringing it up to maybe try and connect a few dots here, because it's still like a hazy, hazy area when you start getting to who and why and what. I mean, uh, I'm an Air Force veteran. Um... I, I saw your thing on Evergreen, and it made me wonder because I used to see these Evergreen planes on the base all the time, you know? You just kind of start putting things together little by little, and I thought maybe I could just throw this in there and see if there's any possible connection. And if anyone, you know, really good at investigating, digging it up, you know, maybe I could find some. Sure. Email us at uh, bobtuskin.com if you know anything about this. And, Mike, stay tuned. We'll, we'll bring it up uh, as we learn more. Okay, brother. Thanks so much, buddy. It's always great to hear from you. Hey, thanks a lot. Take care. Take care. All right, Scott, uh, there's a lot to talk about between earth changes and aerosol operations. Yeah, that, that stuff is nasty stuff, man. In PA, boy, I would be picketing the daylight out of that. That fracking stuff destroys your water, man, big time. It, I mean, I, I've got videos where they, they put a match to their water and it lights on fire. And if they, they had a release of that stuff, Stuff, you know, that stuff is toxic as it gets. I mean, wow. You know, it's just unbelievable, man. I mean, heck, these guys are insane doing that kind of stuff. Just talk about the eco damage. Wow. You know, and I have a, a video from a, time, a while back from Hungary when they had flooding hit one of their facilities where they were mixing these, these chemicals. Uh, and, uh, it, it was a, a chemtrail plant, you know, and it, yeah. this uh, broke the banks and it just flooded that well, whole village. Scott, if, if you don't mind, I, I want to entertain this, this topic since it, it came up a little bit more. Um, and now joining us on the line, we're going to have Shepard Ambellis, the director of the Intel Hub, to, to fill in the gaps uh, where I could not on, on the chemtrail issue and where exactly it's coming from. We've talked about Evergreen and its um, role with this massive operation. Chef, tell us more. Well, Evergreen Air, you know, it started out uh, back in the 90s, uh, you know, and even before that, 
they were running uh, a lot of CIA covert missions, uh, actually shipping drugs in and out of South America, weapons. Uh, they've been involved in all sorts of covert activities, in, including rendition torture, uh, which takes place in various airspace above foreign countries, especially over the Middle East, due to how, the, how treaties read with torture policies. They can torture people in airspace, and uh, Evergreen Air is part of that, uh, as well as uh, chemtrail uh, retrofitting planes. I was uh, pri privileged enough to interview one of the only whistleblowers to ever come forward. Uh, we have the only interview with them. It's still floating around out there. I was but he actually he, he asked you to remove it, right? Uh, yeah. Completing your sentences for you. I know where you were going with that, huh? Yeah, I was asked to pull it, like Larry Silverstein. Um, pull it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and I did actually, in fact, pull it uh, just due to this guy's life. Yeah, he was receiving threats, death threats, all sorts of things, and you know, in my mind. This guy should want to have the information go out because that's his biggest insurance policy. The more publicized it is, the less likely they are to take him out because then that would lend credibility to what he's saying. Sure. Yeah, and uh, Pinal County Air Park in Marana, Arizona used to be one of the head uh, covert uh, facilities of Evergreen Air. Um, you know, I've, I've had reports from people that have... Uh, uh, you know, known, uh, like, uh, for instance, this uh, uh, person I know, her dad landed on the uh, airfield there because his plane was having an emergency, and he wasn't getting any response from Evergreen, and uh, so he just decided to put it down on, on the tarmac. Well, all of a sudden, he was surrounded by guys with machine guns. They were telling him, don't look around, don't look anywhere and they helped him get his plane going real quick, gave him some gas or something, I think he was like low on gas, and just like got him out of there. Um, I've heard this same story several times, John Lear told me about this as well. So, you know, it's, it's this uh, weird uh, atmosphere that's heavily guarded uh, there. They have black jet technology, strange looking craft, underground helicopter bases right near the facility. Um, and the, you know this uh, whistleblower that that we talked to, he was involved in actually putting the sprayer uh, apparatus on the plane, uh, and equipping these planes to spray to discharge, uh, and uh, you know so he well, was I, involved, and I saw the documentation. I, of I him guess the question that a lot of people still have, though, Shep, and we'll answer this maybe when we get back with Shepard and Bell as the director of the Intel Hub as well as Scott from the Believers Underground, do these planes have pilots or are they remote controlled? This is the Bob Tuscan Show. Okay, welcome back to the Bob Tuscan Show. We have the director of the Intel Hub, Shepard M. Bellish, joining us. Let's finish our thoughts on Evergreen and its role with chemtrails. And then let's talk more with Scott from the Believers Underground, who's joining us this whole hour to talk about earth changes and so much more. Shep, any final thoughts? Well, this whistleblower was saying that he didn't see any signs that these planes were equipped with drone yoke technology. Uh, he said he had heard it rumored at uh, lunch break in the facility that the pilots that fly these things only get their orders once they're actually in the air uh, to where they're flying. Uh, so he said that's how that works. However, um, Evergreen is heavily involved with drone uh, aircraft and drone technology. So I wouldn't rule that out at this time. That, that uh, time that that whistleblower worked at Evergreen was back in the 90s. Uh, so now I would assume they're probably fully drone, uh, you know, from what it looks like to me. All right, very good. Uh, Shep, 
I think that pretty much speaks for itself, huh? Sure, absolutely, yeah, anytime, uh, I mean, uh, you know, Evergreen Air is also involved, I mean, these guys, they're involved in shipping worldwide, they have massive cargo, uh, container ships, uh, the list goes on, so they're importing and exporting uh, essentially as a CIA front company, just like Pegasus is down in uh, Florida near you, Bob, uh, where they have... Uh, known to have stored UN vehicles on, a, on, the, on their uh, facility running. Yeah, I saw that, and you can see it from the images on Google Earth. There's tons of vehicles out there uh, just lined up. I, I thought about going and checking that out at some point. It's not too far from where I'm at. Yeah, interesting stuff, Shep. All right, buddy, well, well thanks, as always, for popping in with tidbits of information. I, I know chemtrails is, is one of your areas of study. And uh, I was glad that you were listening and heard the caller's questions and could shed some more light to the topic of aerosol operations. It's none other than Shepard Ann Bellis, director of the Intel Hub. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. See you guys later. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Bob. All right, very good. Uh, let's move on and continue the dialogue with Scott of the Believers Underground. Scott, any final thoughts with the whole chemtrail thing before we go back to some of the Earth's changes? Well, it, it's part of the Earth changes because it's called radioactive forcing of aerosols. It's it's how to it's there to one of the programs because they they got multiple programs running on this thing uh, where it it causes the feedback effect. Basically, the sun used to hit the glaciers and reflect back out into space. But now the glaciers are leaving, so it, and now that Fukushima blew, you know, you got a what a new 40% increase in the ozone hole. You know, that's what's making the ozone fried. You know, not their CO2 gas con, but you know, it, it, there are there are programs that are actually they're trying to do something where you know they could slow this effect down because they're they're just flat running out of time. You know they're 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 way out of time, but uh, uh, another one of the projects that uh, is highly concerning is is with metals. You know you have a low far antenna system set up over there in uh, Amsterdam, Germany, going over into Switzerland, and and it, what it is is it's a radio frequency telescope. So they they use these little metal rods that span out over a thousand, almost a thousand square miles, you know, so they can see back all the way to the Big Bang. With the metals up in the air, okay, they're basically, it's a form of LOFAR. So, you know, they, they can get a, a total round view going back to the Big Bang. Now, a lot of people have seen these silver orbs that have been, you know, floating around, and I believe those are receivers. They're drone receivers for the information that, that goes back over to CERN. So, but with LOFAR, it also has military application because it can see out, but it can also see down. So, you know, it's, it's highly disconcerting, you know. It, now, some of the world leaders, you know, really are do-gooders. They're just, you know, polluted with, with a lot of, you know, bad thoughts. And some of them are paranoid, you know, about other countries and whatever and stuff. You know, so they, they, there's always those power struggles going on. So they're always, you know, hedging their bets and doing that kind of stuff, you know. But, you know, when you do absolute power, corrupts absolutely. And, and it looks like they're going to just take the Fed and flip it over to the World Bank. And, you know, and it looks like they're going to do that globally with all the banks, you know, because the World Bank is already the, controlling the IMF. It's the sister to the World Bank. And the ICCP, which is also in Geneva, Switzerland, you know, is is being run and operated out of the World Bank too. It, they they had this one project, a hundred ways to save the planet project, you know, as they, uh, you know, I put in a video like I don't know, almost two years ago, and uh, with program Dussel, you know, so they got a couple of these Hedron colliders out there, you know, uh, but you know, it, it's it, it's a it's really a splitting hair type of thing. Because the the U.S. really wants to keep its, you know, power or protection, you know, even though they're going to a, a global government. So, you know, it's it's one of those things that, you know, you you got 
a bunch of different things going on. But, uh, you know, the, uh, a low far antenna that goes global is, is, is pretty uncool, you know. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. It's the time we live in, you know. And, and the only way these scientists and uh, physicists get, you know, funded is through the money. You know, but doing that, they, they have to sign all these confidential, confidentiality agreements and stuff. And, and 